Uh, I guess essentially I wanted to write a kind of tragic fable. Um, but it's important, I don't think, to actually level tragedy with comedy, but to intersperse tragedy with comedy to make the humour hit home. I tried to provide a contrast, not, not so as to give people a relief, but to help people realise that the two things can exist simultaneously. The shared experience and the humour of that shared experience tends to be what they take away. Sometimes it's the only thing they remember. War veterans very rarely talk about the horrors of war. They talk about the funny things that happened to them when they were on leave or you know, the, the time they dropped their rifle. Stories that really are peripheral to, to the experience itself, but which they feel comfortable in sharing. And as they share those stories, the toys tend to grow and grow and grow. And in the end, the guy that dropped a rifle was dropped a tank or something like that. Um, and a lot of the book is about storytelling. Um, that's what I'm interested in, both as a journalist and a novelist, the way people tell stories. And working class people, I think especially, and elderly Jewish people, <laughs> always tell stories with humour. Um, Yiddish itself, and there's quite a, little, quite a bit of Yiddish in the book, is a language that naturally kind of lends itself to humour because virtually every common noun or adjective is an insult or sounds like an insult. Um, I, but I wanted to include the horror that they exclude. I wanted to include the terrible things that make that terrible humour necessary. Um, so as I say, it wasn't a question of helping readers feel comfortable with the horror or giving them a distraction. It's important to the whole story that even horror and hatred are remembered with humour and love. Mm -hmm.